Halloween is fun, Halloween is sexy, Halloween is scary in a make-believe, pretend scary kind of way, of course, but how do you make Halloween really, really scary, folks? Oh, that's easy. You get the co-parents running our school boards involved. Case in point, the tall foreheads at the ever-progressive Toronto District School Board have several concerns with respect to the imagery and even the foodstuffs associated with All Hallows' Eve. In fact, some schools in Toronto and elsewhere now refer to Halloween as Black and Orange Day, fearing the H-word itself will be as potentially offensive to certain groups as Christmas might be for some non-Christians. Indeed, the TDSB's Halloween policy is outlined in a document we've unearthed called, wait for it, Teaching Resource for Dealing with Controversial and Sensitive Issues in Toronto District School Board Classrooms. Ooh, scary indeed. In any event, this document, dripping with spine-tingling bureaucraties, outlines six reasons why Halloween isn't really as much fun as you might think. For example, number one, quote, Halloween is a religious day of significance for Wiccans and therefore should be treated respectfully. Now, according to the TDSB's supervising principle of equity in inner city, <laughs> don't you love these titles, folks? Nobody knows how many students of the Wiccan faith attend Toronto schools, nor have any complaints been quantified, but non-Wiccan celebrating Halloween might kind of, sort of, offend real Wiccans who consider the day sacred? No, I'm not making this up. Number two, quote, peer and social media consumer pressures target all children and their families as consumers of costumes, makeup, food products, etc. Many students and their families can feel this socioeconomic marginali marginalization keenly. Well, the TDSB might be onto something here. My young son, Sean, he was planning on dressing up as Iron Man this year, but since money is too tight to mention, Sean realized I wouldn't be able to afford replica repulsor ray gloves or a pair of jet propulsion boots. Daddy, forget about buying me a costume this year, my young son said. I just realized social media consumer pressures are fueling my desire to dress up as a superhero. I'll stay at home on Black and Orange Day this year, so you don't have to feel any of that socioeconomic marginalization keenly or otherwise. Oh, what a kid. Number three, the images and icons associated with consumer-oriented Halloween can come into conflict with some students and their families' religious beliefs. Huh. Does dressing up as a zombie mock the resurrection of Christ? In any event, the TDSB notes that tombstones, the trivialization of death and gore, are offensive to both Christians and Muslims. Still, if a devout fill-in-the-religion-here student was offended by Halloween celebrations, or more accurately, if the parents of that student were offended, wouldn't it just make more sense for that pupil to stay at home on October 31st rather than alter Halloween celebrations for the entire student body? Or is that too logical? Number four, the food products that are marketed heavily during the Halloween period can come into conflict with students and their families' dietary habits. Now, certainly this is the biggest red herring put forth by the anti-Halloween camp. Since offensive food products are marketed all year long, surely it is within the bailiwick of parents to control such foodstuffs. Besides, Halloween fun at our strictly peanut-free schools involves dressing up, not consuming copious quantities of conflicting candies. Number five, some students have had first-hand traumatic experiences of violence that make talking about death, ghosts, etc. extremely alienating. Again, the TDSB has zero tangible evidence to support the position that a rubber werewolf mask might alienate or traumatize a child who has previously ex experienced violence, but are we to assume children who have experienced trauma are forever incapable of embracing make-believe fun on Halloween. And number six, many recently arrived students in our schools share no background cultural knowledge of trick-or-treating or the commercialization of death as fun. Well, 
forget Halloween, folks. Surely recently arrived students have no cultural knowledge of Canadian history, the lyrics to the national anthem, and for that matter, the delayed offside rule in hockey. But isn't it incumbent upon teachers to, well, teach the kids about Canadian culture? Or is that too much to ask for, that teachers teach? Bottom line, Halloween is all about kids from all cultures and faiths dressing up and having fun. The educrats at the TDSB appear to be basing a policy paper more on phantom concerns than quantifiable complaints. Oh well, happy black and orange day nevertheless. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies.